break-ins to bullies to love. We take another turn and ask you tonight, are you single or have you ever been single here in the Twin Cities? If so, this next story is for you. Yes, when Wallet Hub said our area was top-notch for all those looking for love, it certainly raised Adrian Broadus's eyebrows, and so she went seeking for the truth. Here's what she found. Everyone joining me at the table. Well, hello, Jeremy. Hello. Is living single. Hi, welcome to Single in the City. You All on a journey to find their heart's fulfillment and a perfect match. It's been a little bit more difficult. Turns out Minneapolis was ranked among the top 10 states for singles. The experts looked at 150 of the most populated U.S. cities. Minneapolis also received brownie points for nightlife, economics, and recreation. I would say there's some truth to that. So why are we still alone? I invited single, non-married men to join me for a coffee date, but that invitation revealed a surprise. Despite this high ranking, my single ladies say they haven't had any success. Same for the fellas. Yeah, I just haven't had success in <laughs> Minneapolis. It really comes down to what is your approach and how you take and go about dating every frustrated single thinks that where they live is the worst place to date. Meet dating coach Kim K, the real one. She's better than Cupid. And you want to have a phone conversation with them. You will want to spend some time getting to know them before going out on a date with them. But if they did some homework up front, they would actually meet more quality people doing just a simple Google search on the person's name. What kind of is their background? But don't sit there and stalk them on LinkedIn and Facebook. She also says only use online dating apps like Tinder and Bumble as a tool in your kit. Kim says people need to physically go out and meet others. And once you do that, what do single men and women want? I think it's important for people to have faith be a big part of their life. Someone who's kind, who would really like to, you know, grow together with someone and raise a family together. Doesn't live at home with mom and dad. <laughs> Not acceptable in your playbook. Um, I mean, there, I mean, I guess there's different situations. Don't backtrack, be confident and firm in your decision. Yes, like I am not a fan. What's a deal breaker for you? Somebody that, that has a lot of, uh, I guess you would call it baggage. Everybody has baggage. You wanna find somebody who will help you unpack. Past relational baggage, those are things that you can kind of unpack and you can then like work through together. I think children are not bad baggage at all. A big thing about dating is understanding that people have pasts and don't judge someone quickly about their past or what may have come before you. Look at them who they are today and take the time to get to know them. Another deal breaker they all said, smoking. Meanwhile, before you swipe, make sure your profile is top notch. Our coach says avoid lists, but you should include this. Your profile should be shorter than 140 words or less. Shouldn't have a list. Should stay on the positive side. And it should talk a little bit about you and your personality and what you're seeking and a little bit about them and what you find attractive about them. Yes, I was taking notes because <laughs> I'm in the market to make a new online dating profile. Oh, I'm, I'm available to help you do this. Oh, 140 words. This is not the first time we've said that we're like single on the show and you're, you know, you're on the news right now. I'm single. This is a pretty I've recently filled out an application. It says single, married, or divorced. My finger is empty. And if somebody wants to change that, <laughs> they can, but I'm single. I did not, so I, I totally agree with what she said at the beginning where people were like, Minneapolis, St. Paul's the worst place to date. They literally say that about every city. I disagree yeah. with that. They do. I've, I've never heard of that friend this weekend and from New York City. It's one of the largest cities in America. Like, this place is the worst. Oh, come on. I've never heard anybody say that about Chicago. The thing I've the heard people say that about Chicago, too. Like, the My reason why Joanna. I think that it's like this is because this is not a transplant city. You grow up here and you come back sure. here. There's not a lot of transplants like, say, L.A. or Chicago or Phoenix where you live. So... You're either in the group or you're out of it. It's hard to like tap into the social pipeline of people that went to high school here. Yeah, but if you're not in the group, here. then it's a whole big pool. But what the survey ranked cities on is the number of activities that are available. If we look at Minneapolis, we've got great outdoor activities, huh. lots of things to do. People just have to be willing to take that leap of faith and get out from behind their phones and meet someone. Places to go on dates. Yes. Man, I told you, the last first date I went on, I was terrified. It was my current partner. I did not want to go. But that part... Getting beyond the screen and meeting a human being. Oh. Is this a good place to date? 
Is Minneapolis, you're single, is Minneapolis a good place to date? It all depends on the person and their preference. You? For me, no, it hasn't uh, been. That's what I'm saying. Told you she would tell the truth. Here's your thoughts. <laughs> I'm fine in love in the Twin Cities.